So there is two approaches to this. You can take the long-winded, convoluted, let's philosophically break all this down and engage in a very lengthy discussion about it, or just go the simple way. I like simple things. Um, there are two ways of approaching science. You can either approach it, as a, approach it as an instrumentalist or as a realist. The instrumentalist approach of science is to basically engage in the process and uh, do the experiments. The, the whole engagement of the, the scientific process is still the same, the scientific method and how you come up with answers and, and, uh, uh, and certain beliefs about how the world works and the patterns that you identify from the world. The, it's the same process. I'm talking now about the, the um, overall conclusion from it. And I think it, it's a breakdown between accepting versus believing. You can accept the conclusions that are derived from the scientific method that tell you certain things about the world, certain patterns about the world that allow you to predict uh, certain events, um, that tells you a narrative about how the world functions. You can accept that, and these are models that we make these are intellectual constructs that we come up with based on the findings that we have from science, which is a human process, okay? You can accept them as an instrumentalist in the sense that you can utilize these things to benefit you, to come up with technology, for example. Or you can approach it as a realist. What you find from these things is the true state of the world. This is exactly how they are. This is real. It's telling me reality as such. If you do that, you're going to have clashes because you have a source that is telling you certain things. The Quran, the Hadith, they're telling you certain things about the world. The Prophet ﷺ did tell us some things about the world and how it is. There is obviously the element of interpretation that comes about where um, uh, knowledge of the Arabic, knowledge of the greater body of the corpus of Hadith, the tradition, um, uh, the, the, the approach to it itself, the interpretive methodologies that will give you multitudes of meanings in certain cases that you can entertain one or the other or whatever. That's not really my interest here. My interest is specifically about science itself. The clash comes about when you elevate science, which is a... a how do we put this in a clear way? Science is the human activity of investigating patterns and identifying patterns in the world as we can measure them using available technology. That is science. The models that we construct, uh, which we call theories, are groupings of these patterns in a semi-coherent fashion that allow us to then instrumentalize, utilize these theories so that we can come up with conclusions and um, serve our needs in the world. That's the process. What you have to remember is that you are limited by two things. Your experience of the world, you haven't measured everything, and technology. Every generation or so, there is some sort of a technological revolution that begins to reveal aspects and dimensions of the world that we didn't know existed. Simple example that everybody gets taught in high school probably or middle school now is the invention of the microscope. Before the microscope, people thought the smallest thing was the cell, for example. And then you get into the microscope and then you find out, oh, the cell actually has things inside of it that we can study. Even microscopes, you go from the light microscope to the electron microscope, you're going to have dimensions of, uh, of reality that reveal themselves to you that it was just technology that gave it to you. Now, if you come to people that were present before um, this technological revolutions, they would not accept what you say today about reality. And if you lived back then with them, you also wouldn't accept it. You might accept it in the realm of possibilities, but you haven't measured it, you haven't seen it, so you don't know that it exists. Same thing for us and the future. I think it's... Um, uh, hubristic of us to treat science as realists. For Muslims, I think the safe, the proper approach, not even the safe approach, the rational approach to science as a Muslim is the instrumentalist approach. It's the idea that I take whatever constructs that we come up with, hey, within this realm, this theory functions well, it works well, 
when I say semi-coherent, I mean that it still has deficiencies, and these deficiencies are actually a byproduct of our technological limitations as well as our experiential limitations. We're not measuring everything. There was a statistic that I read a while back. I don't uh, imagine that it's changed much. Um, it said that it was from the, uh, from the US uh, Department of Environmental, uh, uh, of the Environment or something like that. And what they said was 70% um, uh, of life is in the ocean. And we have only explored 5% of the ocean. So when we're talking about life and biology, I think it's a little rich to make grandiose claims about the nature of life, biologically speaking, in a quantitative fashion, in absolute terms, when 70% of it is in the ocean and you've only looked at 5 to 10% of the ocean. Um, there's obviously more to say about that, but I just want to get the approach kind of we get lost, I think the problem is we get lost in details uh, whenever, whenever the subject of religion and science comes up and we forget that we're, we haven't even validated the paradigm. You need to validate the paradigm itself that you're operating within. Is this paradigm a logically uh, proper paradigm to operate within or not? So that's, that's one aspect. The other aspect is you have to recognize that when people speak about science and religion, they're speaking, they're not speaking about science and religion, they're speaking about philosophical naturalism. They're speaking about all that exists are things that can be measured, whether with current technology or with future, te future technology. It has to be measured at some point in time. And that is all there is to existence. There is no such thing as ghaib, as the unseen. Um, and they equivocate between quality and quantity. This two, the two things are the same. So when I look at somebody's brain activity, and I say I'm looking at their thoughts, that's not really true. When I say I'm looking at brain activity, I'm just looking at brain activity. That doesn't mean I'm looking at their thoughts. Thought is a quality. Uh, can you tell somebody if they're in love just by measuring certain areas of the brain? No, you can't. Love is a quality. It's an experience. It's in the realm of phenomenology. It's something else. But if you talk about science versus religion, one of the first things that you're assuming and you're expecting people to accept without question is that Love and sodium ions flowing through AMPA receptors channels and NMDA channels in the brain, in the limbic system, they're the same thing. That's love. Sodium and potassium flowing in and out and calcium going through signal cascades and oxytocin that is being released, and that's love. You're asking people to accept that a priori without telling them. That's the thing. You have to deconstruct the discourse science versus religion, into the paradigms, first of all, that they're operating within and the philosophical assumptions that they're making. And once you do, that's when you'll start to realize that actually there's no clash between the two fields. It's a clash between worldviews. It's a clash between kufr <laughs> and iman. That's really the clash. It's not a clash between science and religion. In fact, most scientists... Um, historically speaking, have been religious. And even today, there is a lie that keeps perpetuating that most scientists are atheists. If you look at the last few polls done on this, by the way, only 17% of scientists identify themselves as atheists. The rest identify themselves on a spectrum. Um, but outright atheists, most, science, most scientists are not. I hope that answers the question. I mean, that's really all there is to say about it. It's, a, it, it's not as complicated or as scary of a subject as people try to make it to be. It's very simple. The conflict is between Iman and Kufr. It's not between religion and science. And the language people use, they're trying to just, uh, they're sneaking it in underneath and say it's, it's either you choose science or religion. No, they're telling you either you choose faith or, or disbelief.